China and Russia once set out to reshape the skies with the joint CR929 project, a sleek new jet that was supposed to compete with Boeing and Airbus and usher in a new era of aviation independence. But while China's next-generation aircraft remains on the drawing board, Russia's aging Ilyushin IL-96 has quietly made a comeback. Though heavier and slower, the IL-96 is proving that proven reliability is still important in an industry obsessed with cutting-edge innovation. So why is China lagging while Russia has regained its footing? Let's find out. The CR-929 project began as an ambitious partnership between China's COMAC and Russia's UAC, each holding a 50% stake. The collaboration was intended to leverage the strengths of both countries Russia would bring decades of design expertise stemming from the IL-96 widebody, while China would bring deep pockets advanced manufacturing infrastructure and access to one of the world's fastest growing aviation markets. At first, optimism was high. The two countries celebrated the signing of major development agreements, promising a jet that would combine Russian design prowess with Chinese industrial ambition. However, early cracks soon undermined this vision, largely over technology transfer and design philosophy. Russia was reluctant to hand over the entire technical database and detailed intellectual property, fearing that China might absorb the knowledge, but eventually use it to pursue its own independent projects. China, on the other hand, insisted on integrating advanced Western-style composite materials and advanced avionics, something Russia was skeptical of preferring to rely on proven domestic components and systems. These disputes quickly crippled progress. This ambitious schedule was severely delayed, pushing the expected first flight from 2025 to 2028, or even later, with no clear end in sight. Until the turning point in 2022 when sweeping Western sanctions hit the Russian aerospace industry. Cut off from Western components and software, Moscow shifted its priorities to domestic programs such as the MC-21 and the upgraded IL-96-400M. For the Kremlin, the CR-929 no longer represents partnership but dependence. And in a world where technological autonomy has become a matter of survival, Russia is beginning to ask a dangerous question. Does it really need China anymore? Increasingly, Moscow considered that maintaining control over its aerospace assets independently might better serve its long-term interests. Don't forget to drop a like, hit subscribe, and turn on the notification bell to keep us going. Thanks a lot. While the joint CR929 project has been plagued by delays, design disputes, and political tensions, Russia has quietly taken a more pragmatic tack by reviving its own Ilyushin IL-96 widebody. Rather than wait years for a multinational project mired in turmoil, Moscow has turned inward, betting on an aircraft that has proven its mettle decades ago. The result is the IL-96-400M, a comprehensive modernization of the Soviet-era jet. On November 1, 2023, it achieved its first successful test flight, a remarkable achievement at a time when China's C-929 is still just a concept plane. The new aircraft features a longer fuselage, the ability to carry up to 370 passengers, an upgraded glass cockpit, improved avionics, and Russian-made PS-90A1 turbofan engines. It is not the most fuel-efficient aircraft in the world, still using four engines rather than the two of modern Western designs, but it serves a much more strategic purpose. By using the existing manufacturing infrastructure of the Voronezh aircraft plant and a completely domestic supply chain, Russia has avoided the sanctions that have crippled many of its other aerospace programs. Every major component from avionics and hydraulics to materials and engines is produced locally, ensuring the IL-96 is not dependent on Western or Chinese technology. This not only shields the program from political risk, but also ensures continuity for the Russian presidential fleet, the state airline, and the military transport unit. 
In essence, Moscow has turned a seemingly obsolete platform into a symbol of self-reliance and sovereignty. The IL-96-400 maids may not directly compete with the performance of the Boeing 787 or Airbus A350, but it does something more important for Russia. It can now fly, it provides logistics, connects remote regions, and serves as a ready domestically controlled alternative to foreign jets while the CR-929 remains in limbo. This project, now a Chinese-only effort after Russia withdrew from the project, aims to produce a long-range wide-body aircraft capable of carrying 280 to 400 passengers over 12,000 kilometers. Designed with a composite fuselage and advanced avionics, it is expected to compete with the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350 demonstrating China's technological independence. However, despite its lofty vision, the project faces growing obstacles that threaten to derail its progress for years. One of the most significant hurdles lies in the propulsion system. The Russian PD-35 engine originally planned to power the jet has been delayed in development by at least two years pushing the launch date beyond 2028. China's domestic alternative the CJ-2000 is still in deep testing and far from certification leaving the program without a reliable engine option, a life and death issue for any aircraft. In addition to the engine, the C929's supply chain remains fragile. Much of its advanced materials, avionics and manufacturing tools remain dependent on Western suppliers, leaving the project vulnerable to sanctions and export restrictions. This dependence not only slows development, but also poses long-term risks to production stability. Certification is another major challenge. While the smaller C919 has entered service domestically, it continues to struggle for international recognition, and experts predict the aircraft will face an even tougher road. Full global type certification is unlikely to be achieved until 2032, if not later, effectively delaying any chance of competing internationally. Meanwhile, the commercial market has been lukewarm. Comac's target of completing the first C929 fuselage by 2027 now looks increasingly unrealistic, with most analysts predicting significant delays into the 2030s. Chinese airlines, despite their patriotic rhetoric, are pragmatic about their purchases. Their recent order for 292 Airbus A320 NEO aircraft shows they still prefer proven, fuel-efficient aircraft from established manufacturers. In essence, the C929's grand promise to reshape the global wide-body market has been held back by technical uncertainty, fragile supply chains, and buyer caution. What was once seen as a symbol of the rise of China's aerospace industry has become a prime example of how ambition can outstrip readiness, leaving the jet's dream of flying still years, if not decades, away. The Ilyushin IL-96 is not superior to China's jet, but is smarter. Its success lies not in groundbreaking innovation, but in pragmatic timing, strategic control, and sheer resilience. While China continues to pursue its ambitious dream jet, the C929 envisioned with lightweight composite materials, next-generation engines, and global certification, Russia has chosen a completely different path. Instead of betting everything on a risky multinational project, it has focused on something tangible, a proven aircraft built with domestic resources and fine-tuned to meet urgent national needs. The modernized IL-96-400M is a product of this realism. By leveraging decades-old infrastructure existing tools and a fully domestic supply chain, Russia has avoided the severe disruptions that have crippled much of the global aviation industry under sanctions. Every key component, from the PS-90A1 engine to the avionics and materials, is Russian-made freeing the program from foreign dependence. This makes the IL-96 not just an aircraft, but a strategic asset one that guarantees operational readiness, logistical autonomy, and political symbolism for Moscow, at a time when self-reliance is imperative. By contrast, 
the C929 remains a grand but distant dream. Its reliance on complex composite materials, unproven domestic engines, and a global certification process overseen by the West keeps it stuck between ambition and reality. The program's delays reflect not just technical challenges, but a deeper issue, China's dependence on Western technology and lack of reliable equal cooperation with Russia. The collapse of the CR929 partnership has exposed this divide starkly. Russia refuses to hand over full access to its technical data and design heritage, while China insists on integrating advanced but foreign dependent systems. The result is a stalemate, two partners with similar goals but incompatible philosophies. Ultimately, Russia's jet is not superior to the COMAC in technical sophistication. It is superior strategically. In a world dominated by sanctions supply chain fragmentation and geopolitical instability, Russia's decision to modernize its existing reliable airframes is a more effective move. The IL-96 may not be flashy or revolutionary, but it is flying, performing important state and military roles, and is fully under the control of the government. In today's climate, that is worth more than theoretical perfection. By choosing practicality over prestige, Russia has bought itself time, maintained its aerospace capabilities, and kept the skies open, while China's next-generation flagship remains firmly committed to its own ambitions. In aviation, the smartest move isn't always to build a jet. Sometimes it's to have one, while the rest of the world waits for another. This Russian jet demonstrates that principle perfectly. It may not match the slick performance or advanced materials of its Western or Chinese rivals, but it represents something far more valuable in the current geopolitical climate, self-reliance, resilience, and continuity. In an era of persistent sanctions, disrupted supply chains, and diminished access to foreign technology, Russia's Ilyushin is proof that pragmatism can sometimes trump ambition. Rather than chasing perfection, Russia has chosen to modernize what it already controls, and in doing so, it has secured a reliable sovereign workhorse capable of serving both civilian and strategic needs. It's a lesson in aerospace survival. Good enough today is often more important than perfect someday. But the story isn't over yet. China's C929 still has enormous potential, a symbol of technological ambition and national pride. If COMAC can overcome its current engine delays, reduce its reliance on Western materials, and achieve international certification, it could one day transform Asia's long-haul market and make China a true aerospace power. But the road ahead remains rocky, and time is not on Beijing's side. Every year of delay widens the gap between ambition and execution, between dream and reality. Meanwhile, Russia's modernization program built on a foundation of domestic production and immediate operational capability continues to quietly expand its role in government cargo and defense operations, proving that sustainability sometimes lies in simplicity. The next decade will be about more than which aircraft performs better. It will show whose strategy will endure China's pursuit of innovation and prestige or Russia's focus on sovereignty and survival. In the race for the eastern skies, the ultimate victory may not be the plane that flies the farthest, but the one that flies the longest. Which strategy do you think will win? Innovation or resilience? Leave a comment below. Have a safe flight. Goodbye and see you again.